Welcome back. This might sound familiar. Thousands of civilians trapped in a small pocket of land, under siege for weeks, while the world's media are refused entry to the war zone on so-called safety grounds. It's not Gaza we're talking about, it's northern Sri Lanka, where 50,000 Tamils are reported to be caught up in the fighting between Sri Lankan government army forces and the LTTE, the Tamil Tigers. Just as the war is reaching a critical phase, the Sri Lankan government has banned the media from the battle zone, so we can't even tell you how many casualties there are. For journalists covering the story, there's been more than just the conventional war to follow. The Listening Post's Minakshi Ravi now on the intense propaganda battle and the media that are both observers and victims of the information war. Obtaining accurate casualty figures here is almost impossible. The end of the road for us, we can't go any further, and as you can see, it's heavily guarded by soldiers. Both sides do their bit to provide you with the message they want out every day. Uh, it's very hard to tell who is telling the truth, to be honest. We have to contend with figures that the government give us, figures that we get from the LTTE and figures from Tamil sources, and they are all conflicting. Further down the no-fire zone, there are still thousands of civilians. The army don't know exactly how many. Sri Lanka's civil war is one of the world's deadliest conflicts and possibly one of the most difficult to cover. As the hostilities enter their 26th year, the fighting is at its most intense. The casualties are soaring and government restrictions are squeezing the media out. This has been a war without witnesses. The media have not been allowed into the war zone. What we really need is an accurate idea of how many are dying inside the Tamil Tigers' last stronghold. They've been reduced now to a little pocket, yet remarkably we've had very little out of the Sri Lankan government saying how many civilian bodies have been found there, exactly what the death toll is. So it's almost impossible to say what the truth is here. And journalists are increasingly becoming afraid to probe too deep to get to the truth. Lasanta Wikramatunga, the former editor of The Sunday Leader, was shot dead in his car in January this year. The editor, who now occupies his chair at the paper, says reporting is crippled by the lack of access to different sources. We have to simply rely on the government, on what the military gives us, or the military spokesperson. There have been a few guided tours by the military, but even on those tours, it is uh, just chosen journalists or chosen sections of the media who, take it, uh, who are taken on these guided tours. Sand the fences behind. And even the few who do make it in are kept on a tight leash. Nick Payton Walsh was in Sri Lanka reporting for Britain's Channel 4 News. When we're with the government on one of their organised trips, our words are actually not censored, we're not told what to say, but what we are shown is clearly very well orchestrated and obviously we have no access to the Tamil Tigers, to the no fire zone and rely on information distributed over the internet. On the 5th of May, Channel 4 ran a report in which Walsh highlighted claims of ill treatment of Tamil refugees in an army-run internment camp. The UN has asked the camp's authorities to investigate some of these allegations. The report cited incidents of sexual abuse and a dangerous lack of hygiene in the camp. Within three days, he was kicked off the island. A Channel 4 news team was deported from Sri Lanka yesterday, accused of tarnishing the image of government forces. Obviously, it couldn't be much tougher for us. We've been thrown out of the country and we've been blacklisted. We've been told we won't be allowed back in. Uh, of course, it, it's, it couldn't be much tougher as it currently stands. There's no independent access to the people who are suffering in this conflict. There's no independent access to the army. We can't talk to either of the sides about what they genuinely have seen. Uh, and I, I have to say, I, I can't see in the future that it's going to get any easier at all. When we asked a minister from the Sri Lankan government about the administration's intolerance of critical reporting, he said the media was at fault for being sensationalist. You guys have got to use your intelligence. But of course, you know, when you have a, let's say, a dramatic news story, you know, there's no time to do this. So I'm afraid I think there's a lack of, let's say, scientific investigation, and that's part of our soundbite culture. Even though the army has demarcated a new safe zone, firing and shelling is continuing. If you scrutinize it, you wouldn't have such sensational stories. So it's in the interests of the media to actually privilege the people who want to be sensational. Why they have marginalized the media, why they have isolated the media in reporting this story, I simply do not understand because that has only allowed to also fuel the propaganda by the LTTE. We've got two sides, no way of independently verifying it. 
Uh, the only time I've been up to the border of the, uh, the no-fire zone, as it was designated by the government, uh, much better to describe it as a combat zone, I heard about uh, six shells landing. The army said there were mine detonations. We saw the smoke rising above the jungle canopy in front of us. It was impossible to get any accurate picture. Obtaining reliable information from any war zone is a challenge. The Sri Lankan government has said images like these are just Tamil Tiger propaganda. In Sri Lanka, the obstacles to journalism are magnified. The information black hole grows deeper because the media are being systematically shut out or shut down. Their strategy appears to have been to completely subjugate and terrorize the media. If there was any dissenting voice or any criticism of the war, you were branded as traitors. Either you were with them or you were with the terrorists. It was simply that. There are no more defense correspondents in this country reporting on the war. It's impossible. As if you're a defense correspondent, you simply cannot write. Not anymore. And the Sri Lankan government's crackdown is widening beyond the media. The United Nations casualty figures for the first three months of the year caused such uproar from the government that the UN decided to withhold them from public release. The Sri Lankan government objected to those figures put out by the UN. Uh, they say that they weren't happy with the criteria being used and they say they had an agreement with John Holmes, the UN's top humanitarian official, when he came here to see the president, uh, that they would change those figures. But even as the news out of Sri Lanka's war zone reduces to less than a trickle, the fighting is only intensifying and the death and suffering continues. The tragedy of it all is that they isolated the media, they terrorized them, and uh, this story is yet to be told. It's the biggest story happening right now. It's the biggest story for us in the media to report on, and, and we simply cannot write it. More Global Village Voices now on the lack of independent reporting from Sri Lanka. Sadly, the Sri Lankan government has been uh, using its power and influence to convince international government. They have been providing inaccurate information to the media uh, outlets, and many media outlets have been have caught on to the government's propaganda. The government, however, has starved the public of information about what is happening on the ground. Given the critical situation for civilians now trapped in the no-far zone and the escalating humanitarian crisis, it's urgent that the media is allowed immediate access to the conflict zone and to the camps so that the public can know what is happening. Finally, we have a short but clever piece of animation that takes Israel's closure of Gaza almost two years ago and makes a plea for the freedom of the people there. One of the things that makes the film noteworthy is that the film's makers are Israeli. One of them, Yoni Goodman, worked on the award-winning feature-length animation Waltz with Bashir, released last year. Watch carefully, and you'll notice that the film does not just criticize Israel. One of the hands you'll see in it is clearly Egyptian, blocking access to the Rafah border crossing. The film is called Closed Zone. It's a testament to the political power of animation, and it's our Internet Video of the Week. We'll see you next time at The Listening Post. Thank <laughs> you.